So, you're a budding videographer using a DSLR or mirrorless camera to film your videos, and you do a lot of outdoor filming under the grueling hot sun. You find out quickly that your footage looks like overexposed garbage, especially if you have a high aperture setting trying to get some nice bokeh. That blurred background cinematic look. The easy way to achieve this is by having your camera's iris wide open, letting in a lot of light, and that's why your footage looks like someone is beaming a flashlight in your face. Aha! You buy a cheap ND filter to put over your camera's lens to fix this, but wait, while your image looks better now, that cheap ND filter has a color cast over your footage making you look a little blue. Two ways on how to fix this in Premiere Pro, coming up. Before we get started with this tutorial, I'm presuming you have some knowledge of using Premiere Pro CC. You know basic terms like timeline, mark in and out points, etc. And also a caveat, these tips work best if there's an object in your footage that is white or light gray because we're going to use these white objects to adjust the white balance of your footage to remove the color cast. Now with my disclaimer out of the way, let's begin. First, the easy way, because dang it, often when editing, we only have time for the easy way. Okay, so I already have my video files imported in Premiere Pro that I want to use. I'm probably only going to use one for this example. And as you can see in my preview panel for my video file, I found the section that I want to put in my timeline. So I mark the in and out points by clicking the mark in and mark out icons. You can also just move that blue marker to your in and out points that you want and you press I on the keyboard to mark your in point and O on the keyboard to mark the out point. Okay, so I'm not using the audio associated with this clip, so I'm just gonna click on the video icon and then drag my selected clip onto the timeline. And as you can see, the ND filter that I use in this example has a slight blue color cast that we need to remove. So now click on the color menu at the top to display the Lumetri color panel and then click on basic correction. Now don't blink guys, cause this is the easy fix. Notice the house in the background has some white framing around the roof. We just click on the white balance selector and then click on this part of the house and BAM! Notice Premiere Pro automatically increases the warmth of the temperature and also adjusting the tint, changing my skin tone from that blue look to a more natural color. As we all know though, easy doesn't always mean better. I personally would dial down the temperature from the 18.7 that Premiere Pro has automatically selected, going all the way into the orange temperature, to around 7 because that bright adjustment makes me look a little too red. So a better but slightly longer process is to create a mask around the white section of this house. Okay, so let's grab this clip again from the preview panel and drag it onto the timeline. So this is unedited, and now we will zoom in on the white section of the house by changing the timeline preview from fit to 150%. Now, under the video effects info, under the effects control panel, we wanna click on the pen tool that's under opacity. This will allow us to create a custom mask. So on the white section of the house, we're gonna draw a square or my favorite shape, a triangle, and now a mask is created displaying only the small portion of the house we selected. But let's remove all feathering from the mask. We want to see that section of the house clearly, so let's put the value to zero. Okay, now let's click on the color tab to bring up the Lumetri color panel. Let's look at the Lumetri scopes, specifically the YUV vector scope that is showing the color space used within this tiny section of the house that we masked out. If you don't see this vector scope under the Lumetri scopes, just right click in the area, as you see here, and then select it. Notice the color of this portion of the house has a hint of cyan. So while I was saying blue color cast before, it is more accurate for me to say this ND filter that I was using has a cyan color cast. What we need to do is edit the colors for this tiny white triangle that we've masked out and we need to make the vector scope display that it is directly on the gray dot. We're aiming for that gray dot in the center. To do this, click on the color wheels and match tab under the Lumetri color panel. Here we see three wheels to adjust, but let's start with midtones. If changing the midtones isn't enough, we can work on the shadows and highlights, but for now, the midtones. 
Again, since this color cast is heading towards cayenne, we just need to move the midtones cross here in the opposite direction towards the yellow orange colors. Notice as I move the midtones cross here, the vector scope shows the change. And now it looks like we're on the gray dot. Now, if I were to go crazy with this, it would go way past where I want it to go. So don't overdo it. Okay, so let's get back to the gray dot in the center. And now let's get back to our editing panel. Let's hide the opacity, which in turn hides our mask that we created. And we put our timeline preview back to fit. And yeah, I definitely look better. A more natural color plus the cayenne color cast isn't there anymore. So now we can compare the quick way we did this versus the mask way versus the original look. And we could do, as I mentioned before, the quick way by just lowering the temperature from 18 to 7 to get a closer match, but it still isn't quite right. But hey, when you're pressed for time, go with what works for you. So there you have it, two tips on fixing color cast. But you know what? Prevention is better than post-editing. So set a custom white balance with your camera using a white balance card, and you can avoid having to adjust your white balance in post providing you don't forget to use your white balance card while filming because, you know, that's never happened to me before. Anyways, some affiliate links for some affordable filters I use as well as a white balance card in the video description if you're interested. If you found this video informative and you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe for more tech, cinematography, and gaming content to come, and I'll see you guys next week.